Well, let's get to more analysis now on the state of the U.S. and global economies. I'm joined live via Skype by Andres Aslund, economist and a senior fellow at the Atlantic Council. Thank you for joining us again. Thank you. So overall, which countries and regions have taken the biggest economic hit from the pandemic so far? Well, the biggest economic hit has been in the Eurozone, in particular Italy and Spain that are down uh, by about 10% uh, 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 this year. And uh, China has done the best. Uh, China is the only significant economy that is actually growing this year, even if only by uh, just over 2%. Two, uh, two and next year, it looks as if uh, virtually everybody is coming back uh, uh, very strongly. And the U.S. has done surprisingly well with a decline of only 3.5% and probably as much uh, uh, growth next year. Uh, all kinds of emerging markets have done much better than expected. So this is uh, really primarily a, a European crisis. So then talk about the sectors that have been impacted the most uh, by COVID and what governments have really done to help support those industries. <clears throat> well, you can say that the main thing is structural. Countries that have had a lot of tourism, think uh, uh, Spain and Italy, uh, Croatia and other countries uh, down there, they have suffered uh, uh, the most. The countries that have suffered the least have been those that have a lot of commodity production. And uh, East Asia, where the manufacturing has uh, uh, kept uh, uh, going. So it's personal services that uh, have suffered. And what has been done against it? Uh, the lesson so far is to pour as much money as possible uh, on the economy. And here, of course, the U.S. has poured much more money on the economy than anybody else. And we have seen, uh, you mentioned Asia, we've seen that China is seeing huge export numbers and was one of the first major economies to see any growth in 2020. What more can China do to really improve growth in 2021? I think that the big question now when uh, President Trump is departing, it is for China to get into normal relationship uh, with the rest uh, of the world. Uh, in the last uh, year, China has actually stood up defending the global uh, trading system, while President Trump has uh, imposed all kinds of uh, sanctions uh, on China. It's very unclear what policy uh, pre uh, President-elect Biden uh, will uh, choose. And there, I think it's a great opportunity for China to try to uh, go for cooperation rather than confrontation. And as we look at the U.S. economy, obviously the vaccine rollout beginning here, just how important is the vaccine rollout and this, obviously this last-minute stimulus agreement for the country's economic growth for the rest of the year and then going into 2021? Both are very important, but the vaccine is uh, uh, most important. And as it looks now, it seems as if the vaccine is becoming a great uh, success. And uh, as it said now, everybody should get an opportunity to get uh, vaccinated in, uh, in the spring, in the second uh, quarter. And that should uh, bring an end to, to this crisis. And since money is free, spend the money. It doesn't cost the state uh, anything uh, as it is uh, today in the Western world and in uh, and therefore, just uh, keep going. Now, we have heard talk of a V-shaped recovery by some or a K-shaped recovery scenario for others when it comes to the global economy. What does this actually mean for the average person or business in terms of what they can really expect the recovery to look like? V-shaped <clears throat> uh, uh, recovery is primarily expected in China, which hasn't had much of a, uh, a downturn. But for the rest, it is that the growth uh, uh, next year will be approximately at the decline uh, this year, uh, a bit less in Europe, where the decline has been much uh, uh, greater. So say that the world at the end of next year will have slightly less of a GDP than it had at the beginning of this year. So it's two lost years, as it looks now. But uh, as it is now, the situation looks much better than anybody really expected uh, last March. So we have to be very humble with the forecast now. And all of this, as a side effect, we've seen that the pandemic has pushed a number of trade deals and financial mechanisms along in an effort to really shore up a post-pandemic recovery. Obviously, Brexit still being negotiated with just days to go. Just how important is a deal for Europe's prospects in 2021? 
I think that uh, uh, the big positive surprise has been that we have not really seen a deglobalization. And here, uh, the RCEP, uh, Chinese uh, big uh, free trade area, has been a big positive surprise. And we're now seeing Europe and China getting into a big investment deal. So essentially, the deglobalization has been indeed Brexit and uh, uh, the U United States uh, under uh, Trump. And for the rest, it has been more uh, and freer trade.